to record. All right. So, just to start our interview today, what is the best debut album you know? Uh, probably Black Sabbath. That's the That's first one album. that comes to mind. But uh, it's amazing, right? Uh, dude, that's that's where everything's at. That's the beauty of heavy metal, not only <laughs> <laughs> Black Sabbath, you know. Yeah. Black Sabbath with the song Black Sabbath by the band, band Black Sabbath, band Black Sabbath, and starting with uh with a tritone, you know, the Devil's Note. Yeah. That's that's iconic. It doesn't get heavier. It doesn't get heavier than that. And no, they kind of started though. They started metal with that, so like it's yeah, it's it's very impressive. It, it it couldn't be different, you know. If heavy metal, I mean, um, accept had accept the from from Germany. I was I was doing a review this week, and then I was doing my my, my research. Access had a, a a a early version of Access called Band X in '68, and released it some material in '68. So that's before Black Sabbath. And that would be before heavy metal itself. But it doesn't start with the Devil's Note, so it's not the beginning. No, of and I mean the whole thing with the. With uh, Iomis uh, fingers and having yeah. to tune down and like the themes of the lyrics and uh, yeah, it's just so so good, so dark. That it is, man. It is. It's it's kind of a cliche, but it's more than a cliche. It's a classic, you know. That's where you. That's where you, everybody should start. You're definitely correct. Um, yeah. You just do you have any? Do you have any 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 pick for best debut al album ever? Oh. Best album. Wow. It's very, that's, very hard to. That's a too hard, too hard question. Serial uh, hard question. But, There's a lot of albums. I, I don't know. I don't know. Any other pick? The, Not a heavy metal a album, but uh, maybe you know, waiting, waiting for the sun, of, of the doors. You know, it's uh, something very. Uh, very special for me this this album and with a lot of keyboards and it's a, it's a, a wonderful trip that I lis I listened since I was you know 13 14 years old and I think it's a perfect album but it's not a heavy metal album <laughs> so that's yeah, it. It doesn't have to. It, it falls short. It falls short <laughs> of metal. It exceeds in goodness. So that's what matters at the end of the day. Any other pick, yeah. Henrik? Uh, I was just uh, gonna say uh, "Rain in Blood" because that's like an mm -hmm. album I I keep coming back to because it's so good. It's a classic as well, but it's it's there for a reason. I, I love I love the fact they decided to make it uh, short, thirty minutes, thirty three minutes to be exact. So let's make this album. Yeah. You're not gonna uh, we're not gonna pump it up, not gonna buff it up with things we don't need. We're gonna we're going we're going straight to the point. What it is going to be as long as it's supposed to be, it's thirty minutes, and that it is it's even better because we're gonna listen and listen again and again and again, and that's a reality. So I think it's it's it's, it's very iconic. The, the the point they say, you're not going to do a disservice yeah. to our sound in order to meet a criteria. We're going to go with what we, we believe. I, as a host, um, there was had... A magazine. Me. Sorry. Sorry. There, there was a magazine no, go, go, go in for Sweden uh, called... There was a magazine in Sweden called Slave State uh, some years ago. And uh, their scale when they were uh, reviewing albums was from one to Rain and Blood. <laughs> so... <laughs> 10 was raining blood good. <laughs> that, that, that was raining blood good. That's cool, man. That's right. I didn't know that. That's good. Um, you know, I, I, just a second, Kyoto. I think I'm going to show you a, a great album that I have here. And I I, I, yeah. I want to hear what Henrik have to say about this. <laughs> oh, oh, we I, got I like there. I, I'm big, I've never been the biggest fan. Like, I haven't listened to them as much as other bands, but I mean, they're good. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> like they're resilient, man. When I think about Megadeth, I think about resilience. You know, they went through so much, so many times. It started from a huge problem: uh, um, um, Mustaine being kicked out from from Metallica. Everybody knows that story. So 
it's I think Pega Death means resilience. Quality wise, I think they vary greatly yeah. on on their <laughs> on their career, but they are resilient, and that's that's encouraging. Um, that as a host, like one of the I, first bigger bigger support shows we did supporting uh, Megadeth in Stockholm, actually. They were super cool to us. That was a good show. Eric, I think you know that, but you're a pro, man. That's great. <laughs> Go on your curriculum, dude. That's fantastic. Congrats. Thank you. So, as a host, I made a preparation, so I picked three debuts that I think are great. First one, Sorrow and Extinction by Paul Bearer. <laughs> Oh, 2012. So Paul Bearer is this new wave of doom metal in the United States. I think they were needed that. I mean, it's been a while doom metal has been uh, uh, not being very, very respected in the United States. And then when Paul Bearer brings um, Sorex in extinction in 2012, they, they brought the doom metal back. They made the doom metal great again in America for a sake. And um, the the cover of that album too, man. I have to point out it's one of the most beautiful covers ever seen into music. My second pick uh -huh. would be Fallen Angel of Go go for it. I think I'm interrupting everybody. That's my, my role as a as a host, but yes, go for it. <laughs> uh, I was just waiting for your second album. <laughs> okay, my second pick is Fallen Angel of Doom by Blasphemy, you know? Uh, that's that's the death metal from Canada, and I think the way they had blended um, um, black metal into the mix in Canada, we are very very uh, familiar with the death metal from Canada, especially tech death from Canada today. Nowadays, uh, Canada is a, is a is a um, um, a cred for the tech death tech death metal uh, uh, there, and that's fantastic. For some reason, Canadians they have this superior music musicianship skills, but bless me, in my opinion, they were able to bring this black metal tone into the mix, changed the game, loved this debut from 1990. And my last pick, just to go for it, Soul Side Journey, Dark Throne. Yeah, man, melodic death metal from Norway. That's what we're talking about. That's how drums should sound in Scandinavia. So these are the three picks I brought today. Any question, doubt, comment, crucifixion? No problem. Good picks. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that you, uh, you're into Canadian metal crypt. No crypt up to them. And that's one of my eyes. <laughs> um, like a band that has big impact on my talk today. We used to listen to Crypt of the... No, I, I still do. Canada, Canada, I, I have to... I have this dream in Elm that I wanted to talk about regional scenes. I will go forward with this with this project one moment or another. All right. So if you're listening to this podcast, you already know who you're sitting with. Uh, we're going to have a presentation in Portuguese. We're going to record this later because, you know, we're speaking English here. But... Be very welcome, Henrik, on Metal Monday. Thank you so much. And um, so we want to, we'd like to talk. So Henrik, uh, we would like to talk about a few things in this interview. The first one, uh, we'd like to talk about Hunter Gatherer, your latest uh, album. So Hunter Gatherer was received very well for the public and critic. Uh, and how did you guys envision? this release how did you guys uh, um, um foresaw this material before actually going to into a studio and recording it uh, we really felt after our that we want to because that was a funny album right like comedy uh, really and uh, i mean we had a lot of fun doing that, joking for two years. But uh, after that, we felt like we needed to do something serious, that we wanted to go back to the roots, to the darker side of us, uh, like where we came from, really. So we, I guess we, we went back to the roots and uh, just did a really dark, 
and not funny. We took away the humor, and uh, it's way more serious. And you know, Hunter Hunter Gather talks about anxiety in several moments. And how this feeling drove the composition of this album? Uh, how the feeling was? Uh, I mean, like how it was to record, or Eric, we are losing you. Must be a big can, you, can you hear us? Yeah, we have a huge delay here. I'm yep. going to ask. I'm going to turn. Yeah, I think I we should turn up the cameras for a while just to see if it works out, and we turn on. We turn back on later. So let's all turn off our cameras, okay? Okay. All right, Jesus. Can you ask again, please? Okay. And Hunter Gatherer talks about anxiety in several moments. How this feeling drove the composition of this album? A laugh, no problem. Uh, I'm gonna try. Uh, he, he he brought me. I'm gonna try my computer. Okay. No. Hello, Eric. Hello. Let's see if this Hello. works. Hello. I hope so. No problem. No, no problem. Thank you. Sorry for the inconvenience, and thank you very much for the effort, man. Thank you. No worries. So, can so you go again to the question, please? The second question. Yeah. yeah. Henrik, Hunter Gatherer talks about anxiety in several moments. How this feeling drove the composition of this album? Um, I'm not sure. Uh, Johannes is the one writing all the lyrics. So probably for him, uh, when he was writing the lyrics, that might have been like a part of the, of the feeling he had. Um, but I wouldn't say that so much uh, recording wise or writing the music, I wouldn't say. I felt overall, I felt this, I had this feeling of, of anxiety listening to the album. I think this is very, I, I'm not saying you guys were influenced by black metal, but this is very common into black metal uh, yeah. uh, style when um, they use the Locrian uh, Greek mode, uh, mode. And when they do this, they create this suspense feeling into their writing and i don't know if it was intentionally if it was not intentionally but uh anxiety was the feeling i had when i was listening 
200 gatherer, which is a good thing in, in, in the end of the day because um, uh, music is a media, as movies or books or any other media. And I think music is way more powerful into driving feelings to its audience, to the listener itself. So uh, congrats, congrats on that. Thank you. <laughs> I know uh, I know this is not a proper conceptual album, you know, uh, yeah. but your last two releases that uh, had much content, kind of a concept itself, but it had much content in general. And why did you guys take this direction? You mentioned already that uh, uh, Avatar Country was a comedy and now you want to take things more, more seriously, I mean, uh, uh, writing-wise. But um, why did you guys opt to go into a more... Um, a, a less conceptual way. I guess we felt we always try to not repeat ourselves. Uh, ourselves, that's like our our main goal always to not do the same record twice, right? And uh, yeah, we've done a, a few conceptual albums now, so we we felt we wanted to do something completely different from the last album and completely different from the other albums we've done before that but still like keeping the sound that we are i guess if you guess what i mean uh and uh yeah so, so we recorded this album live and that was important for the for the feeling of the album i think it sounds live and uh, we recorded the tape as well so it, it, we wanted to make it really live feeling wise we have um you mentioned something very interesting we have um here in metal month every morning i reveal a new album you know so every morning 6 a.m we have a new episode reviewing a new album and we uh very often i face bands who are repeating the same album their debut album over and over and over again for five years 10 years 15 years 20 years 25 years in case of accept <laughs> but uh, and that that's fun though. <laughs> they shouldn't change, right? <laughs> at all, at all. They actually they were uh, they were. I was being a host a hostage by um, Udo Dirk Schneider, and yeah. when Udo Dirk Schneider didn't want to do the same music anymore, they find a replacement to be hosted of this replacement. Not Tornillo. It's it's the 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 Stockholm. Syndrome all over again. It's insane. <laughs> but but, um, but you mentioned that you don't like you don't don't like to repeat yourself to 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 repeat the 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 album itself. Uh, yeah. It might it might be very difficult to keep your identity, oh, but yeah. sound different every release. How do you do this? I don't know. <laughs> we write hundreds of songs and we throw 90% away and keep what we feel is good for the album, you know, and uh, it's, it's super hard to explain how we do it every time. But I mean, a lot of the riffs that we have on, on this record and uh, the re and more recent albums as well are like 10, 15 year old riffs sometimes that we picked up. Because we we have them and uh, we we store store them and we keep them and then we just like hey remember this riff that might mm -hmm. suit this record you know let's let's try to do something with it so we we've, we've been a band for so long uh, actually yesterday was 15 years since we released our first album <laughs> so we have a lot of riffs that we never used and that we yeah we we pick up you know. When, when it's time, when we feel it's time. And we write new stuff, of course, as well, but we take we take and uh, we write, take all mm -hmm. stuff, new stuff. Yeah, I lost your, uh, I can't see your faces. I don't know what I did. No, mm -hmm. I have focused on your camera, uh, but I <laughs> <laughs> That's nice to see you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> We have a problem now where I cannot go back for a second. Yeah, never mind. I'll just oh. look, I'll look actually, at the back. It's fine. Actually, it's a big problem because my entire computer is frozen. So, uh, she's just going to go on with the interview. I will restart my computer. I'll be back in a sec. Okay. okay. <laughs> and was, the, was this album uh, harder to write? Was it more of a challenge somehow? 
Uh, I think it it was it ran pretty smoothly the writing process for this one. We had mm-hmm. a lot of idea. We usually like write uh, everyone separately at home, and when we feel that we have enough material, we get together. We we meet at someone's cabin or summer house, and mm-hmm. we. I try to put it together and we do this process like uh, four or five times every record. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was a lot of fun writing for this record. Just, uh, it's hard to explain, but it was just very an inspiring process. And, and this album is also the very first record you guys producing American in LA, right? Yeah. Very Why? Important. Why is that? Uh, well, to be honest, we were really, me and the others, I guess, were quite skeptical to recording uh-huh. in, in the US and LA, <laughs> for sure. You know, too many posers. What's my, what's my honest opinion? Uh, <laughs> I'm prejudiced, you know. But uh-huh. uh, then Jay Rustin, our producer, he, uh, the studio that we ended up recording in is his like second home. He records a lot there. He recorded uh, Amon Amart before us and uh, Stone Sour and, you know, a lot of bands. Uh, and he knows the studio so well. Uh, so he, <laughs> and he loves it and said like, He convinced us, and I'm super happy he did because it was a great studio, and they had all the gear you can ask for in the world, and uh, great rooms, and uh, yeah, such a good studio, and nice people working there. So yeah, super happy that we ended up recording there. And I mean, it it was only us in a studio, so to be honest, it doesn't matter a lot where in the world you are because you're so focused on the recording that you won't meet any people anyways it's it's basically a <laughs> room and uh, that's where you spend a month so where it, i mean the only the only time it matters where you are is when you take a walk in the evening uh, to get some air <laughs> <You> know <laughs> But yeah, it was a great experience recording in in LA. I heard uh, they actually sold the studio to Stevie Wonder now. So, <laughs> so cool. Oh, we were right in time. Oh man, that's cool. that's like an investment, by the way. That's a good investment. That's <laughs> nice. Uh, all right, so um, we are very glad to have you here for our episode today. That will wrap up for our first app for our first segment. We we are back after doing it for our next segment. Hold on, on your seat. Thank you for having me. Eric, Avatar Country was a milestone for Avatar. Looking back in the days from now, what was special about the production of this album? I think uh, what was special for us recording it was we had so much fun. Like I said, it's it's a comedy. And it's based on this joke that we just took way too far. That jo- Jonah started calling himself the king. It's so it's so fucking stupid. We just started calling him the king, you know, and then we wrote a record about him and every song is about him. And that whole touring cycle was all about the king, you know. So it was a lot of fun. It was probably the most laughing during a recording. We've had, but I think bands sometimes they sometimes bands forget about this. You know, uh, everything is so serious and professional. Not professional, that, that's not word, but so serious and sober <laughs> and stressful and stringed out into heavy metal nowadays. That sometimes is 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 very important to go back that's to the exactly roots. You know, how we felt doing that record. Like, uh, we need some humor right now. We need to be able to joke. Because it's it's an important part uh, in music, I think. Like uh, Rammstein is masters of blending that into what they're doing. Like it, it's fun. It's a lot of humor in what they're doing, and they they're still playing music. 
Yeah. Men of War, have you ever looked at Men of War? Men of War is a joke that was taken too far. Everybody knows it. <laughs> and everybody loves it. And now they can't get out of it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's, that's, that's so true. Uh, uh, but sometimes uh, here, you are an expert in Brazil. I know that. So we have a band here called Massacration, which is... Um, it's, it came out from a, a comedy show. There was a comedy, yeah. comedy show on an MTV channel here in Brazil. And inside this comedy show, there was one of the segments that was a heavy metal band. And it started as a joke. It was taken way too far and uh, became a full-time band, a full-time gig. And 60% of Brazilian headbangers, they, they hate it just because <laughs> it's a joke. And that's a problem with heavy metal in Brazil. Oh, you know, it's, it's very it's, funny. You you have to hear Massacration, Henrik. It's very funny. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like I have to. He calls himself the god of metal, the son of the god of metal in Brazil. So <laughs> I think you you relate to some of that to your inside joke. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I think I think comedy. The Brazilian band, in your opinion, like in metal. Uh, could you repeat it? I lost you. What's your favorite or what's the best Brazilian band in metal, in your opinion? That's a hard word. Best is a big, big word, you know? Yes. Today, 2021, I'm very excited about uh, two bands. Nervosa, they came out from the ashes. They had uh, they went through hell a few months ago. And the release they had released last week last week was, was impressive in this banner. I also love a band called A Ultima... Uh, the, uh, a última teoria, last mm. theory in, in English, and uh, they blend jank with Brazilian rap in a way that was never done before because the whole lyrical theme of the band is black metal, satanic black metal. Mm. So it it connects to a, a a underground scene in Brazil that is unique. Seriously, Henrik, this is the band. I really, really want Brazil, uh, Brazil to export in the next years because it's unique, never done before, and they deserve it. So, yeah, I'm, I will send you a playlist afterwards. You're going to love it. Please do. I need some more Brazilian music. I will look out for some bands in Campinas as well. Sounds good. <laughs> I, can't, I can't believe we haven't played Brazil yet. I know it was pretty close to to come over before the pandemic. It was in the talks, but uh, yeah, uh, that fell through. So, but I can't, I can't wait to come to Brazil. Well, it's going to be a pleasure to meet you in person, man. Yes. 2020, Henry, as you mentioned, was the hack of a year, you know? And how Avatar went through it. How Avatar went through this moment in Sweden, which was one of the, the most iconic um, uh, reactions to the pandemic. I guess uh, we were in in uh, Russia when this whole thing started. Oh man! With Sabaton, and uh, we didn't know if we were gonna play the last show because it was right at that time, you know. But we did, so we we were happy about that. But when we got home, we we didn't do anything for a while, and then we just felt bored. So we got a rehearsal place. We we usually don't rehearse that much. Since we've been touring so much, we just like we rent a room the weeks before a tour or before a recording, uh, and we rehearse a lot for just that. But now we got a rehearsal room just to jam and have fun because we're waiting. We were waiting, right? Mm -hmm. uh, everything canceled, so we we just started playing old songs and trying some new riffs, and not for the first time in a very long time just rehearsing for fun and not for a specific event or something coming up, you know. But then, and we started reading about those live stream shows and we were like, oh, that sounds that sounds boring. Like playing, <laughs> playing for a camera, you know. Uh -huh. <laughs> and uh, time went by and we thought more about it and then uh, we ended up doing <laughs> doing just that way. And it was it was a lot of fun. 
uh, when we finally decided to do it, we started rehearsing for that, of course. And that was a fan voted set list on every show. Uh, so that meant we could potentially have to play any song from our back catalog. So we had to, <laughs> had to start rehearsing all our songs from all our albums. So suddenly we had a lot to do, <laughs> but it was fun. No, some of the songs we we hadn't played for maybe ten years or or more, so that was a lot of fun. But that kept um, the end, and then we record. Uh, we we did these shows, and we have still have one left. And was the quarantine a productive moment for you all, guys? Or uh, yeah, we've been writing for sure. Uh, we we always write, especially the guitar players and uh, and Johannes. But I I write as well, just not as frequently. But uh, all, all time off is is time to write. So mm -hmm. that's your point. Um, you mentioned you had some quarantine events. What were these quarantine events? How did you reinvent yourself during the quarantine in order to engage with your fans? Uh, we've been doing some like Q and A's and uh, stuff like that, just to keep in touch with fans. Mm -hmm. really. And yeah, we did the shows, so that was one way, I guess. And uh, uh, yeah, it, it's it's hard, like. We recorded a, a video as well, but nothing compares to doing shows and meeting fans in that way. So it, it's been it's been fun, the stuff we've done, but like we we can't wait to play live and meet fans again for sure. <laughs> 2020 great. was definitely a year to spend more time with our families in our homes. And how did you leverage this moment? Uh, can you repeat that? Sorry. Uh, uh, 2020 was uh, a year to spend more time with our families in our homes. Yeah. How did how did you leverage this moment with your family? That's... You have a kid, right? Yeah. I have, no? I have kids actually so that's that's been like the biggest upside of all this having that time because i've been touring so much since since they were born really so this is the longest period of time i've ever been home with them and that's special and uh, I've, I've really been enjoying that part for sure i haven't how how old are they uh two and a half and uh five my daughter is two and a half too, and we are planning a second baby. So when my next daughter, my, when my next daughter or son is two and a half, my daughter is gonna be five. So yes, perfect timing. Henrik, uh, we're gonna finish this segment right now, and after the vignette, we're coming back for our last segment of our show today. Sounds good. Twenty twenty one is on, Henrik. We are not going back in time, and we have a full year ahead of us. What are your plans for twenty twenty one, Avatar wise? Uh, right now, it's it's hard to tell uh, what's what's happening or what's not happening. We we had some shows booked for 2020 supporting Iron Maiden that were moved to this summer, coming summer, and uh, they're still not cancelled. I don't know. We have some festivals that are still not cancelled, but uh, I have a feeling they they might be. So. Mm -hmm. But we still we still don't know what's happening this summer, you know. So it's it, it's hard to tell. But uh, what we're really hoping for, and uh, that I I hope and think might happen, is uh, a tour in the end of the year, uh, European tour. Mm -hmm. And do you believe live concerts are coming back to normal, or at least normalish? You know, it's it's all guesses because, yeah, the va vaccine is is here now and uh, people are getting vaccinated slowly. But mm -hmm. I think concerts, the whole point with concerts is people being close to each other and, uh, you know, being a lot of people in a small amount, a small area. 
So mm-hmm. yeah, I have a hard time seeing concerts being the same, at least in, in quite a while. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, it's, hard, it's so hard to say. <laughs> and, um, go ahead. What do you think? Ha- well, I, will, I promise I will answer these questions after I ask you one question. How do you expect the response from the public? Do you think are they going to flood the festivals the moment the the, the shows are on, or do you think there are going to be some? They're going to be a little bit afraid of coming back to to concerts. How do you see the, the response of the audience? My guess is people are going to be super hungry for shows and uh, festivals, and because uh, I know I am. I, I mean, mm-hmm. I can't I can't wait to play, but I I can't wait to go to shows also and go to festivals to see bands myself. Um, I, I can't wait for that. So I know Which band would you like to see? Um, I have tickets for Rammstein in Gothenburg because I haven't seen them. Uh, mm-hmm. I missed that. So that would be a great concert to go to. Um, uh-huh. They have, have a great concert, yeah. Yeah, that's what I heard. <laughs> so, uh, in Brazil, I think the the major point on people going back to concerts or not is not even the vaccination. Brazil is crazy. Brazil is people here are very very diverse. But I think the main point is dollar. What is going to be the dollar point? You know, uh, feels like the market is going to a cheaper dollar, and that would represent, I can assure you, sold out tickets for every concert in the next week. Yeah. But that all depends on the dollar point. I would say here in Brazil, mm-hmm. at least in, in this scenario here in Brazil. One one thing that I I don't know what's gonna happen, but I, I have a feeling that when when it's okay to do shows again, or like when uh, governments let you, all bands are gonna want to tour at the same time. So mm-hmm. I don't know if that's gonna be a problem or not, but I think there's gonna be a lot of tours and a lot of shows when it starts again. Uh, yeah, I think you're correct. I think there there's a cannibalization scenario, you know, where big where a fan we have to decide three or four tickets to buy a month, and giving up on other shows. And probably the big players are going to leverage this moment. So yeah, I think I never have thought about it, but you're correct. That's a solid point. I haven't thought about. It. You're correct, man. My thought, I don't know. We'll see. Oh, it's true. <laughs> And is there any hack record or tour in your pipeline for 2021 or 2022? Uh, as I said, we're about the summer. We don't know, but uh, we hope to tour at least in the end of the year. Mm-hmm. Uh, then, then continue touring again, you know, the never ending <laughs> tour cycle. And we, we always write new music, so. We, we will start working on that. Or we already did, actually. So we always write <laughs> a new record. What it's going to what it's going to be, I don't know yet. But we'll see. And is Brazil in this mix? Once you have explored North America already, is there any chance of coming to the land of the carnival and produce an album here or book some gigs or go to a Ponte Preta match? I don't know. <laughs> I really, I really want to go to a game. <laughs> best friends he's uh he's at the uh, global the tv uh, tv channel he's a reporter oh so that's cool he should be kayo Maciel. You, you probably recognize his face <laughs> he's, a, he's a big fish yeah he uh he should be able to get me some tickets when i get back there sometime <laughs> <laughs> sure. so you're telling me kayo Maciel is into heavy metal that's uh, inside Joe. Dude, that's inside info, man. It's to- com- <laughs> it's, it's <laughs> man, that's in- I went to his wedding a few years back. Dude, awesome, man. I never m- imagined he was into metal. We have to do this bridge. You have to do this bridge for us, man. You have to uh-huh. talk to him. <laughs> Global, Global is the major trainer here in Brazil, and he is working. His position is very, very big here. So yes, he's a big fish. Yeah. He can get you in any game you want. He's a great That's guy. what I'm telling you. <laughs> and he, he of course taught me uh, what's the best team as well. I probably shouldn't say that. He, he has to. Be, he has to be neutral, right? <laughs> 
not 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 in our podcast. We are having we are having metal podcast. We are biased, so don't worry. <laughs> Uh, but do you have any any plans of coming here? Well, uh, Avatar does Avatar has any plans to come here to to for a gig or something? Uh, we will as soon as we get the chance for sure. We we told our management we want to do uh, your part of the world, and we're just waiting for offers really. So I'm if here. if you have uh, the contacts, please bring us over. <laughs> we have we have we have some. You're gonna share that. It's gonna be a pleasure yeah. for us, Eric. Yeah. That's a that's a personal question, actually. It's not even in our planning, but that's a question for me. How does a Stockholm band see Brazil as a marketing? How do you guys sit in your planning strategy planning session and say, "Hey, Brazil, where does it sit?" I'm from Gothenburg, so I wouldn't know. Ah, sorry, man. <laughs> My bad. I know. Uh, yeah, there is a. There, I know there is a. There is a thing between you guys. Yeah, sorry, man. So yeah. <laughs> from from a Sweden perspective, from a Sweden band perspective, how do you guys see Brazil in in this Brazil as a market? Uh, we see it as a big opportunity. I think if we if we get to come over and play once, I think a lot of things can happen. I I hope that would be the result. But uh, there's not well there, there's a few Swedish band that that come over every now and then, but. Like I don't know a lot about touring in Brazil, uh, so I can't wait to find out how it is. I'm sure it's great. What I heard, it's great. <laughs> so, but the the first market for you guys that was Europe, European market, but it's Scandinavian and Europe in general. Then would be like uh, North America, and would what would be the next one? Uh, I mean, we haven't done Asia at all yet. But, Japan. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, I can't believe we haven't been there also, but it, it will happen, I think. But South America is is uh, on our list for sure of what we want to do soon. Okay. Yeah, we are, we are hoping that happens because we'd love to meet you in person. You yeah. sound like a very awesome person, man. <laughs> Thank you. You too. Seriously. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Made my day. You made my day. And my <laughs> Eric, we are wrapping up this interview, which was such a pleasure to sit with you today. Uh Giselle will talk to you and um yep. uh, coordinate some other stuff after this interview. But the moment is your the time is your yours to give your context where our uh Brazilian fans can find your music and your work. It's your time. Uh, what do you sorry? What do you want? Could you share? I want you to share your contacts and where you are online and your band online, your work. You have this time. Leave your message for your fans in Brazil. All right. Uh, thank you very much for listening. And it was an honor to be on your show. Thank you for that. And uh, Avatar and I, myself, we, we can't wait to come to Brazil. And I hope. I'll see you very soon. I'll see you on uh, Instagram and uh, social media before that. But uh, yeah, see you in Brazil sometimes. Yeah. Thank you. We thank you very much. We are 